Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to Children's Church. I'm Miss Lisa. Today, we're going to talk about animals in the Bible. Last week, we talked about Jonah and the whale. Did you like that story? That's a good story. Well, today, we're going to talk about my buddy, the lamb. He is going to tell us a story, and we're going to learn all about lambs in the Bible. Lambs are in the Bible in the New Testament and in the Old Testament. So it's, we're going to have fun and learn a lot of things today. First things, in your, in your packet of activities, there's a coloring page, there's a maze page, and there's also this. Now, can you guess what this is? Yeah, you're right, it's a lamb. So what you can do is color the lamb, then you can cut it out. And what I did, instead of using this round part, I used a plate. So it would be a little bit more sturdy. So here's your lamb. So now, when you, when you look at this, make this, and when you look at, it, look at it, you can learn about the lambs in the Bible. So, let me grab my glasses. All right, so as I said, excuse me, lambs are in the Bible everywhere, in the New Testament and in the Old Testament. For example, in the Old Testament, in Isaiah, here's a verse. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. And in the New Testament, for John, for example, there is, when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. And in the very, very last book of the Bible, which is called Revelations, there was yet another reference to lambs. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. So there's a lot of references to a lamb. So now, I'm going to ask you a question. What is the first book of the Bible? Does anybody know? Think? You know? Okay, right. Genesis. That's the very first book of the Bible. And there were, the world was created in Genesis. And there were two people created. And do you know those people's name? Was it John and Susie? No. Was it Adam? Right. Adam and Eve. And God created a place that was absolute paradise. It was the best place. If you've ever been any place that you really thought was really, really nice, this place was better than that. It was a paradise. And they lived there very happily. But there was one thing that God told Adam and Eve not to do. Don't do this, he said. Do not eat from the forbidden fruit. Now, was the forbidden fruit a banana? Nah, I don't think so. Was it a grape? Nah. Plum? No. Anybody know? Right. It was an apple. And so Adam and Eve, even though God told him, do not do this, and God wanted everybody to obey him and follow his rules and share his glory with everybody, but they disregarded that and they ate the apple. And you know what, boys and girls? That's how sin was started. That was the first thing that disobeyed God's commandments and rules. So, back in the day, they had a hard time knowing what to do about their sin. They knew they shouldn't sin, but then they, sometimes they did. So, God told them, what you need to do is take a young, innocent animal. This is like a lamb. And what I want you to do, and this is sad, boys and girls, I want you to sacrifice them. And I want to see the blood come out of them. And then you, the priest would put his hands on the lamb, and so would the person who sinned. And they would say, forgive me, God, by this blood, forgive my sins. And they, their sins were forgiven. Well, that was pretty harsh. And I feel kind of bad for all the little animals that had to die. Well, you know what God did? He did something so wonderful and so special. He gave us his only son. And his son came to the earth and he was killed and he shed his blood so that they wouldn't have any sins. So we would be forgiven for our sins. So that was an awesome thing for him to do. Just awesome. So you can remember that. Now, sometimes they called Jesus a shepherd. 
And you know why they call him a shepherd? Because he watches over his flock. So we are his flock. Jesus watches over us so that we don't have to be afraid, that we don't have to worry about bad things happening to us. He keeps us all together so that we're all one. So that's why they always say Jesus is the shepherd. And you'll see pictures sometime of Jesus holding a little lamb, or you'll see him with little children and little lambs. Very nice pictures, very nice. So that you can remember that Jesus is your shepherd and he will take care of you because his son died, shed his blood for us. So that was a wonderful thing that he did. So that makes us all very happy. So in the Bible, there's very many really good books to read. And one of the really excellent books is Psalms. Now Psalms has loads of good verses. But there's one in particular that you hear very often, and it's Psalms 23. Now, I'm going to read this to you. Also, boys and girls, in your packet, you'll have a sheet like this as well. So you can read it too whenever you want with your picture of your little lamb so you can remember that God, Jesus is your shepherd. So let me read this to you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He, re he revives my soul. He guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for, for you are with me. Your rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Isn't that lovely, boys and girls? I especially like that last verse, and I'll read it again. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Doesn't that give you a nice feeling? And I also like the part he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He's with you no matter where you go. And your rod and, they, and your staff, just like a shepherd has a rod and their staff, they comfort me. Um, so that's a really nice verse, the Psalms 23. So I thought that I would read you a little poem. And then I think Lammy has something to say to you. I think, do you? Did you want to say something? You did. Okay. Shh, not yet, not yet, I'll tell you when. All right, here's a, this is a, a poem called, As the Shepherd Knows His Lamb. As the shepherd knows his lamb, God above knows who I am. All I do or think or say, with love he guides me every day. So remember that, boys and girls, when you, when you are just sad or you feel bad, with love, he guides me every day. So you can always ask him for help and say, I don't know what to do, and he will help you. Remember that. All right, Lammy, it's your turn. Now, Lammy is a very special lamb. He has a little collar, a little bow that says, Jesus loves me. But he's also got something to twist. So we're going to twist him up and see what he has to say. I hope you guys can hear this. Do you hear that, boys and girls? Do you know what song that is? That's a, the best song. I would sing it for you, but I don't sing that well. But you can sing it to yourself, okay? Now we hope to see you here next week. And he's still singing. We hope to see you here next week and we'll learn about more animals in the Bible. So take care and have a great week. Bye.